Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting, riveting, and amazing propaganda cast from your host from Pearl Dane, the one, the only master propaganda hero, psych defender of the far land, off here to a 1v1. Oh, Bokash, you know what it is? Uh, the fun. Ivan, who puts the fun in, Ivan? Fun, Ivan? Yeah, that really didn't work out. Anyways, off here for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Here with the. The E fifth Panzer is shown here. Mobile defense featuring command tanks, counter attack tactics, panzer tactician, mobilization posts, and the Puma heavy armored car. In the south is Mirasol fighting for the Red Army, the Soviet Union, Comrade Stalin. Off here with combined arms, NKVD, and airborne troops. A Grenadier Mu 2 versus Dominus Country start here. And as always, a big hearty thanks to my patron supporters. Without them and their wonderful support, the Papa cast would not be possible. So, big hearty thanks to all of us. Other people enjoy my Xbox Patreon, Patreon, or they can donate via PayPal. Links in the description. And if you're considering pre-ordering Covenant 3, you can do so by the link in the comments. Use the code stuk 3 g and I get a 15% cut of the sales. That's a great way to both get the game and support me in the process. And as you know, comment, like, share, subscribe. So, Mirror Sales come in here to NKVD with KV-8s, Raid Intercept, Commissars, Scorched Earth, and Anti-Tank Overwatch. We got busy in the Pioneer 742 moving steadily forward in the front line. Grenadiers here more eastwards. Second Grenadiers got more there for Fnaven. More comes there for Mirasol. Might we see the Commissar there? Possibly. Possibly a quick, pretty handy unit for messing with your opponent's positions. Machining there moving westwards there. Second Grenadiers got almost there for Fnaven. Grand Eastern Pontier. Second squad ready. MD4 turning up. Again, flanked out though by the Engineers here under Mirasol's stalwart and stoic socialist command. Rapidly outmaneuvering in the machine team. We do get a Pioneer's Winter Assist here. More troops that could descend upon the m 2 here. The Phenom seems to sense an attack's going to happen from the other side here. And he does, in fact, pretty much correct the sword of Musket for it. That's it. The Mirasol narrowly spots ahead of time there. Could flank around the m 2 Troops are arriving here. More comes on the way there for Mirasol as well here. Phenom here could go for third gun. The escort likely will, but he could surprise us. This is Phenom after all. Going straight for the car point here. Outmaneuvering here. Phenom is fighting for the Western victory point. Mirasol goes for the weak spots here. This soft bits. Hitting the car point there. Thumbs up to Mirasol. A decisive devious maneuver. The east side gun is moving about here. Got the eastern fuel point. Comes from the eastern victory point here. Back at base for Minasol, nothing further is transpiring as of yet. Machine in there, busy on the Western Munitions Point. Contours of the Machine and Gewehr. And these sending out here, Pioneers reinforcing. Will he go for a fourth gun to the escort? Will he tank up? Contours there being outflanked now by the gun The MD42 keeps them pinned in pace, though the MD42 is paying a bit of a price for that uh, setup there. East side here, a bit of push around T. Cut up on there, being fought over. At this point, Minasol is just buying time here versus Fnaven, just trying to sort out Fnaven. Long can keep the opponent occupied with the 170 manpower squad and denying fuel, the better. He's even laid down some mines here, so like even once it gets pushed off the point, there's an extra spicy surprise here for Fnaven. There we go, gonna just go off. And kaboom. Two men dead. Fnaven here again, might be planning for a fourth gonna squad. There we go. Four gonna builds again, starting to become more. Part of the Wehrmacht meta game, you still get some with lower three grenadier builds into faster tech, but four grenadier builds very common nowadays. Can't find even hit and return. Fnaven, of course, knows that song and dance just as well as Mirasol does, though he can't lay down mines with his grenadiers. Contracting grenadiers here, fourth grenadiers got ready for Fnaven, striking hard here at his socialist foe. West side here comes to flank around the info to learn healthy Fnaven very wisely retreats. Could have hung around for a bit longer, but at this point, the MD42 is just going to get absolutely demolished and handed over to Mirasol if he does. So, pump company here for him. Might be see some Maxims here, more likely just a field gun. But Maxims could also be a good tool to hit back against Fnaven with. Attack on weather for Fnaven and the German army. The 5th Panzer to be shown. Grand Eastern Pump, the Gunner, you see. I'm moving four vets for Deutschland. Sending some fierce engagements here, and Van Ivan is not slowing down here. Bunker up for Van Ivan and the German army. Bring up the center for the engineers. Western Point makes with the conscripts. Fuel point there being seized. We've got 
Mutasaur Soul Dispatching Gnees, but without a Flamethrower, this is going to be a bit tough for them to just handle on their own, even with a Flamethrower, it might struggle a bit, but there you go, Contra Driving, getting to the Heavy Cover, of course, Fnivan sees what Mutasaur is doing and just moves his Gnees into the Heavy Cover as well, at which point, at point blank ranges, the cover doesn't really work out there, there's no bonus at that point, fun fact, by the way, back here, Medic's on the way there, nothing further than Fnivan Space, Worth noting, Fnaven does have a bulletin for faster half track production. And mobile observation post. Perhaps Fnaven does something a bit more mechanized in mind here versus his Marxist opponent. He will have to see flamethrowers on the way there now for Mirasol's engineers. Ground Lost points. No things really happening here in Fnaven's base. As of yet, mines here for Mirasol. Very good. Thumbs up. Tech there from Mirasol on the Red Army, the Tanku V, the Tank Command there, being initialized there. But I'm launching a swift attack. Note he's also been busy S mining the Western Fuel Point to make it harder for Mirasol to get his hands on. Very sensible choice there. Thumbs up. S mines can be a bit overlooked in the Wehrmacht Arsenal, but a good application of S mines can at times be really a pain in the ass. There go. Nice rifle as well here. Mirasol did not see that coming, and that caused him a lot of conscripts. That is some. Um, Really good value, you have a rifle grenade there. Really good value. Tech almost down there for Mirasol at this point. Oh, and our Kanska scored guard wipe. Great for Fnaman there. Mirasol definitely got a bit extended there mentally. And Fnaman just slapped him to the ground. So that's going to hurt the Mirasol. A commas had to maybe bring it up for the losses. Could be a good idea there. That's the commas that can become a fairly solid unit. That said, I'd also not be surprised if Mirasol at this point is just going to rush for the T-70 and try and turn the game around that. And there we go. For now, it pops one of the benefits of the commander, which is counterattack tactics. Very indirectly powerful abilities, while it doesn't impact combat directly. A lot the ability to scrap points really, really fast is quite good, honestly. But yeah, Mirasol, I think, is betting a lot here on a T-70 to turn the tide versus Fnivan. No tech yet here for Fnivan, though. No tech whatsoever. Yeah, oh, looks like the Lack Magnus is coming finally happening, but there we go. Two Grenadier Scorts versus one Conscript Scort, even at close range for the Conscript, typically have the advantage of the Grenadiers. The thing is, they're against two Grenadier Scorts. That's just not going to work out there for Mid Assault Conscript at all. In fact, he's almost getting wiped. And there we go again, thanks to Counterattack Tactics. Boom, neutral. Mid Assault is really having a bad time, but he's obviously banking heavily on this T70. And, in this regard, Fnaven currently has no anti-tank weapons, meaning he is completely and fully exposed to a T-70 being rushed at him. So there's obviously a particularly sensible logic here to what Midasol is doing versus Fnaven. I mean, again, the T-70 is going to be tough for him to deal with. He's going for the half check here, and then, again, courtesy of the bulletin, it's getting out just a bit faster. Not 15% faster. I'd certainly dread to think about so it's what they could do with that then. But you know, still 25% faster isn't half bad. We do get the flamethrower upgrade here for Fnivan and the 5th Panzer DB Sean. That said, while great versus infantry, it's not exactly great versus a light tank. Got to go up here, that said, Mirasol really badly. It's going to need some infantry soon. He's going for maximum instead. I mean, that also has merit here versus Fnivan's fairly healthy infantry complement there. After they're almost upgraded. Needs was the gun to use here. Needs to our force to fall back. There you go. T and the light tank out here for Mirasol and the Red Army. Basically a conglomeration of the T-50 and the T-60 light tanks. Which basically sort of served various purposes. One was more reconnaissance and the other was more infant support. And to basically simplify production and just make something as to move production lines you know, away from the Germans, they made the T-70. Fun fact. Flamethrower have to push up the eastern side here, backing up the Grenadier's advance here. Two massive flame projectors, even laying down mines here. Oh my. And not just any kind of mine, it's the Regal Mine. Oh my. Now this just got a lot more exciting. It's just, you know typically one of Van Ivan's virtues, he typically tends to be one of the more interesting players. Playing for Aptiv as the Maxim. So yeah, off to Maxim there, not the greatest start, we got the T7 here, of course, if Van Ivan can somehow bait into the Regal Mine without having the Regal Mine set off under it, which can happen, 
I mean, that could end up a bit awkwardly for Mirasol's T70, but that said, he does not pursue. Perhaps he sends us something in from Van Ivan. Or perhaps he's just thinking, you know, he probably shouldn't rush in deeply. There might be a pack waiting. Or a regal mine. But honestly, even if a Valor player, like 90% of the time, you know, goes for this command, actually goes for a half track, even then it's even rare for them to actually lay down a regal mine. Which is probably what Phenomenon to some degree is just betting on. His opponent is just absolutely not expecting it. And he is right here with the Contra Engineers. Moving up the west side of the Conscripts. Phenomenon launching a small scale counter attack here with the Gunner Squad backed up in a heavy MG42 team. Which can definitely fend off a variety of targets. East side here, Flame Fabric pushing forwards. One kill, half a two vets and C. One, Contending burned up the Flampanzer Wagon. Well said, we got Conscripts as the Gunnies in before two still. The fight continues here. No Molotovs here, but the Gunnies are being shot to bits out in the opening of the Conscript heavy cover. Half check knocked out. Oh, and exactly the sort of thing there where that could happen. Basically, the half check was moving across the mine, perhaps again hoping to entice Mirosol to set it up, run after him, direct that path. But the 45 mm gun then of the T70 set off the mine under the half track, taking out the half track. So you gotta be careful about these things when you lay down mines, about trying to bait your opponent across the mines. It's a nice idea, but again, certain weapons with AOE damage can set off the mines under you, so. Great kill there for Mirasol. 50 munitions basically working in his favor. Plus, an otherwise, you know, kind of expensive half track unit also gone, removing a significant anti-infantry threat as well. That said, of course, Phenomen here, has not been sleeping on the job. He has not been relaxing. He has been pushing it himself. He's taken advantage of the resources regains he's had versus Minasol, based in part of the heavy infantry tactics to rush out a command tank. So Phenomen here is certainly not slowing down. Minasol here is trying to use the T from the mine sweep because he needs nearby a subtle spot in it. It kind of, you know, makes the T70 unable to actually run over the mines. So that's a bit awkward. Sending in the units to finish the work there. East side here, flank around by Phenomen. Up and doing here, Minasol's right flank. Thumbs up to that. Come on, tank halfway done. Midasar's committed to second maxim. Great. But it also means he's got nothing in the anti-tank department here versus Van Ivan, though. He's probably going to sense soon what it is. He does have radio intercept, which is part of the commander here, but he's going to need a field gun here or an Asian 6M assault gun. To really deal with that befaves Panzerkampfwagen, Van Ivan, and the 5th Panzer Division is rushing out. Here we go. Field gun there for Midasar as soon as he hears it. Thumbs up to that. Easy by the eastern point. Any for the conscripts, pushing them back. And these are the western fuel point. By the way, Befeels, Panzerkampfwagen rushing forwards here. It was not uncommon for some older models of a tank to be used as command vehicles. For example, in Normandy, I think it was one of the SS Panzer divisions actually had a Panzer three as a command tank. For example. A little fun fact there. And his command tank catching the comps with these shoots and immediately obliterates a good portion in the air. Sergei, Yevgeny, and Boris all dead here by the 75 and the high explosion shell. The command tank rushing forward here. Field gun is ready here for Mirasol, but for now, he must suffer the wrath here for Narvin's command tank. At the same time, another deep flank here for Narvin. Thumbs up. Good infantry maneuvering skills here. Catching Mirasol's machine gun in a bit of a tight spot. Command tank keeps blasting away here. Maxim conscript position in the center. Command tank flying away there. Killing one of the gunners. West side here. Gunners being forwards. Bit of counter attack tactics here. Again, activated for Narvin. Very consistent use of the ability. Say how good. Or very bliat if you're the Soviets. Grand Eastern fuel point here. Maxim disengaging very rapidly under the rapidly deteriorating combat situation. Mirasol here may of course try and take up. He could also try and go for the Eastern 6M again for something to help punch down the command tank here. We'll of course have to see what Mirasol decides upon here versus Van Ivan. And he's being pursued by the T70. Good shots there. Command tank there. Half dead. Grenades up there for Mirasol. Got the Maximus the Gunnies in the west, back at Van Ivan space. We do have tech on the way for him. Tier 4, in fact, is what Van Ivan is moving ahead for here. Certainly as bold and aggressive as 
most of Fnarben's strategy of, in this match so far. Risky, of course, gives me a little more time to maybe, like, you know, catch up. But at the same time, if it does pay off, Fnarben is obviously going to have some... What an advantage. So we'll have to see how this exactly works out for Fnarben. But again, definitely not that as risks. At this point, I think Mirosov sort of considered like just laying down mines for the can. I mean, he's been doing it somewhat, but by now he's definitely building up a larger munition sump here versus Fnarben and just laying down mines or booby traps. Could you know, be an idea here for Mirosol here versus Fnarben? And I still think, you know, Commissar could be an additionally nice element here versus Fnarben to mess with his maneuvers and such. West side to be at the command tank rushing forwards there for Fnarben, striking right at Mirosol's force over the same family cannon there. Unleashing Heli upon Mirasol. East side, we got the T-Center back up. And he's almost got the Gunnadia score there. Almost. Heavy Panzer Corps there. Halfway done for Van Avon. Even if you can't get anything out of it right away, there's still the sort of, you know, minor benefit of Gunnadia's Pioneers and support weapons becoming Tiber Tree Force, though. I still don't know why the Panzer Gunnadia's couldn't also get to that. Why it couldn't have been a bigger bonus, but oh well. Mines here. Oh, and Gunnadia's about to get blasted by the command tank. You need to retreat before they get murdered here. So we'll have to see what follows with the Phenomenon next, though. Mirosol, though, is definitely starting to get some good pressure on Phenomenon in turn. Mechanar Slammer Company, so of course, he can soon start creating his conscript to seven man status. The mobilized reserves. Maximum setting up here, being hammered with M42. No instant appears around C. Yeah, not good timing for that anyway, since the machine is out in the open versus machine gun in heavy cover. Field gun there, blasting at the Fnarben's command tank here. He's with Fields, Panzerkampf, Wagen, Fiop. And he's moving up the west side here. He's definitely getting a lot of value out of that counterattack tactics ability, I'd say, here. Versus Miros on the Red Army. The 20th Guard Tank Corps. Don't need to see on the Maxim. The nice raffinate, eight, but ultimately dot in time of Mirosol. T-70 with 12 kills already, slowly approaching the east level. And he's needing help with the maximum. The machine guns are definitely a good addition here for Mirosol versus Van Ivan. And certainly there's an argument Van Ivan could also consider another machine gun here as well, or at least some more infantry. Mortar could also be something to consider. I mean, in this regard, Van Ivan, of course, has plenty of, shall say, just manpower on the options to consider already now, but we'll see. Now the Afghan Hick on his next T being exposed here. Could see a wipe here for Narvin. In fact, we could see possibly even multiple wipes if Fanavin is very unlucky, but there we go. That's one gun court wiped. The other gun these court there gets a bit more lucky though. Fanavin does not pursue his aggressive. I think he could there. Maximum knee sight continues just to maul away there at Fanavin's infantry, suppressing the unit there. Command tank rolling up here. Eight kills so far. And Fnarben here going for even more Grenadiers. In fact, two squads more, pushing up to five. That's fair enough. Would have liked to see a Panzer Grenadier squad, but... That's just my opinion. And again, there's nothing wrong in just going for more Grenadiers, if that's your place and all that. I mean, Grenadiers like machine guns are just quite good. There's a reason, like, you know, they form the backbone of the vast majority of their much strategies. Using them being fixed up. Getting up the gun ideas here. Using the field first aid so it doesn't have to retreat them, can just keep the front line. Got to the side. Fresh gun squad for launch assault. Looks like he did cancel that fifth one. Perhaps Fanavin realized he was a bit too eager there. Yeah, I brauch more infantry! More infantry! Do you really need all the infantry? Yeah, maybe you're right, Heinz, maybe you're right. Mines here for Mirasol, very good. We still do with some booby traps here and there versus uh, Phenomenon as well. And there we go, we got the not particularly great anti tango watch. I'm not saying great in terms of it's powerful, it is very powerful. I'm just thinking it doesn't make a lot of sense as an ability. It really doesn't. Like, compared to like, all the anti aircraft, anti tank aircraft, you know, loiters that had to be nerfed. This one's like just way above that. In part because you can't like get an anti-aircraft unit to like shoot down anything. There's nothing there. There's no counter to it. And it's fairly cheap for what it does. Plus, like it just gets even more insane as time lasts. And finally, 
It's also quite a historical like for an ability like this, no army really had that level of precision and skill to like nail a tanks anti tank artillery, or any kind of artillery obviously like that, but also more crucially, least of all, the Soviet army. They were not known for the great skill in artillery. So this ability just really irks me in a lot of ways. But enough about that. H5 tanks for mid assault, Stone Panzer Fear there for Fnaven. Definitely going pretty hard though on the anti-infantry and continues though to operate with no real anti-tank options. And in this regard, he is kind of fortunate that Mirasol has been hit hard with tanks, but still, it does feel a bit like an old commitment in one direction that could backfire fatally on Fnaven. Definitely something I'd be careful about. West side here we got the Maximus, they're going to need to quick suppress them. Storm Punch there being hauled to the front line here. Asia to five tanks almost on the mid assault. Teeson rushing 40, flanking around the M42 team here. Might get a wipe here. Phenomenon is unlucky, in particular with that ace level M42. It has a good rate of fire, good accuracy. Plus, they're kind of bunching up in a treat. And there we go. Anti tank watch unleashed here by. Mira Solon for Narvan. Command tank dodges it with the Storm Panzer. It could get a lot less lucky in this case, though. The way Mira Solon employed it versus Fnaven is definitely a lot less effective than it could have been, which is very fortunate for Fnaven. Also, this could have been much more costly for him. Very deep flank here by the command tank here. Main good use of the maps, I think. Uh, good space and all that to swing around here. Thumbs up there. Yeah, very lucky for that one. Like, you know, had it been at a different time and like where Fana might have a harder time getting out of it, that could have been a lot more painful. Plus, tactically, it's not really valuable terrain either. So I feel like this one is a bit of a questionable call in there by Mirazol. A bit questionable. Anyways, now the field of Mirazol to help deal with Fanivan's surge in armor here. West side, we got Kansa there backed up by Maxim. Great as an infantry attack, but less great against a Storm Panzer rolling up there with his 150 gun there. Not great at all. We should fire holding on the east side. Now taking advantage of the success in the west, perhaps to swing towards the center and then deal with the mid assault center as well. That could be a pretty good push here by Vanabin if you were to do that, basically. Unraveling Mirasol's front line like a poorly knit sweater. Another counterattack tactic for Fnaven. Thumbs up. Hands of Everbar, of course, means rocket artillery and cause an attempt to, shall say, subdue Mirasol's defenses. He's making it to the T70. 19 kills there. Rive grenade on the Maxim. Perhaps optimistic there by Fnaven. All the way, though, Gunnies are being pursued. Command tank, though, may just prove to be the savior as they do take a little less damage, which could be the thing that saves them here versus the T-70. Command tank getting the petition head on. Asia file there, punches a shot right through the Panther Force Frontal Armor. West side here, we got the jump pump up, and it is suppressed here by the Maxim. Infinite following up here in the wake of that, and we do get the Panzer Air Fighting for Fnaven and the German Army, the fifth Panzer to be shown. And he's advancing in the center here for Fnaven. Got Fields being whole force of mid assault. West side here, Storm Panzer bombarding Mirasol's bunch of infantry. Certainly an invitation to get absolutely obliterated by a Storm Panzer. We'll have to see what Mirasol's follows up with, but T 34 from 6 I think would be a good addition here versus Van Ivan. Ooh, great hit on the Maxim. Good chance of wipe. There we go. Machine gun on the top there. Finished them off. T 7 there, East level 20 kills. Reinforcement here now for Phenomenon, extra five rolling forwards. Back at base for Mirasol. Not much else is happening, mate. Not much else happening. Got the filling going up here. Storm Panzer with eight kills, close of action to one. And thus opening up to the bunker busting barrage. The enemy is taking our territory. Steady push up the west side by Mirasol. Still no commas, in fact, besides. Like radio intercept we and the anti-tank also haven't really seen much of the commander. So far at least. Fieldman's bunched up. Both effective, but versus Storm Panzer. This is also kind of liability, so it could technically you know, create extra you know value in a single shot there. In this case though, Phenomenon wasn't expecting to be there, so they obviously got a lot of good shots with the Storm Panzer. 
Command tank front of the T-70, Sturm Panzer is engaging, gun is being ripped apart by the T-70 light tank, field guns repositioning a bit. I think he made us all... I was about to say he might have realised they're too close to each other, but the way he's moving about, I guess not. I should find just remaining reserve here for mid assault so far, waiting for the right target to appear. Maximus the gun is being in rough way, getting shot at. Not a great set there, mid assault cost him with the maximum crew. That by the way is his second maximum. Wiped out. Pulling up with the Panther Barrage for now, unsurprisingly, wants that machine gun gone. Kaput. And he very much gets his desire there. Right, sorry about that. For some reason they just jumped out. I mean, anyway, going for the T-34 some six. Bit of shooting there. You should find moving forward here. Pioneers falling back here in the center. Can't almost what happened. The strong panzer. You should find running forward here. Pretty aggressive push from the other side, looking to turn the table in for Ivan. Perhaps sensing it extended here. Yeah, you should find there. Could take out the strong panzer. Could be quite a blow there to Van Ivan. Wesson at the T-Sin push back machine crew here. Almost got the Sturm Panzer. Good shot there. Command tank rushing forward here. Flanking the Ishifan. That's going to do too much damage. Got the Sturm Panzer there. Really good push. from Mirza completely blindsiding there. Von Ivan. T-34 there. Flanking around the command tank here. And there you go. Command tank is down as well. This is a huge blow to Von Ivan. This is disastrous. Pani is about to get wiped on. He could actually drive to the base and take out the Panzer ever right now. This is hell in a handbasket for Von Ivan. He's rushing up. Umas now in response to this completely disastrous turn of events. That's uh, well, certainly a bit of a surprise there. Yeah, someone just sent me like a message from Steam and Sunny. Apparently, Steam decided that needs to oh, right what I'm doing right now for some bizarre reason. Getting the gun to easy with the T70. Got the T34 systems coming up as well here. That's quite a blood for now. Now we got the Puma, the 234 2 heavy armored car. Schwerer Panzer Spielwagen. The least built version, by the way, of the 234 armored car series. Mostly made because they had a bunch of spare turrets from the Le Leopard Reconnaissance Tank project that was scrapped. Kind of have to find the center there. Later replaced by heavy armoured cars with other 75 minute cannons or pack 40 dismounted on over that a turret. Fun fact, by the way. West of it is being up here. It can't consent of being wiped out. Yes, Fanam strikes back pretty fiercely here at Mirasol. He definitely, I think, missed an opportunity to take out the Panzer F as well here versus Fanavan, but we'll. Well, also, it's not like Van Aven's been having, like, great success hitting anything with it. It's like, you know, done a little bit of damage, but achieved no kills. Another Puma here for Van Aven. This match is definitely taking some interesting turns. Can't forget the eastern side of Mirazol. Puma number two on the way. So double Pumas is an interesting choice by Van Ivan. I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, I guess they're sort of cheap, fast things and sort of trying to outmaneuver Mirasol with, which, I mean, isn't a bad idea at all. But I think in most situations, under the current circumstances, most players would not commit to, like, double Pumas like Van Ivan is. But that's part of, you know, the charm of Van Ivan. He tends to think fairly well out of the box. Puma gained the teeth and force from six to head on. Well, so we got Nunez playing against the T-70 here, but obviously against the T-70 without some serious anti-tank support for them, they're kind of toast. Also, with all these vehicles and all these Pumas, I do think for now we'll have to invest into more Pioneers to help repair them faster, and who knows what else. Maybe another Puma, though, honestly, against the increasingly large number of tank stoops, there could also be a nice addition here or something else, but oh well. Hunter for Barrage from the center, and... Still doesn't get any kills. I mean, Phenomena is really not having luck with this Panzer ever, is he? Knees there. There's the gun of these. And wipe. Keep from the decent side of the middle salt. Well. 
Got two nine out of sixteen. If when I'm in Zards, are definitely looking tough. I mean, he's not going to put the two field guns. A lot of tanks are teasing the tanks on a bunch of moons, whereas he's got like, you know, a bunch of Pumas and a Panzer effort that so far has a pretty terrible record of hitting anything except the ground. Pumas that being fixed up by Phenomen's Pioneers. Sitting up here. Very quiet match for now here as for now calls this building up. He's probably trying to figure out how to get out of this rather messy situation here versus Mira Sol. It's definitely a bit of a tougher nut to crack what he's currently equipped with. Two Pumas. Is a bit of a surprise. He's going for Stug as well now. I mean, Stugs and Pumas do have some interesting synergies as the Puma can help support the Stug by spotting for it, coming its flanks, while the Stug can just you know, deploy the more heavier anti tank stuff there. T7 is the up his rounds here. I mean, not a bad idea, but if the T7 course is just engaging the machine gun out in the open, the machine gun really is going to lose. They've got Pumas and Westwood C. Pantafast glow on the T34 from 6. Pumas quickly engaging with their 50 mm guns. Good shot there, almost got the T-34. Other one flank team gonna do you see it? Another great shot there. Almost got the T-34 here. Got it. And anti tango watch against the Pumas. We're seeing in the wipe out is definitely a problem there for Fanavin. He's rushing the pun, he's to grab it here, and clearly he's paying attention to other things he doesn't actually realize. That set though, unfortunately for Fanavin, this ends up being a waste of the pioneers as well. As they get white, meaning he just lost his pioneers for no good reason. And to tank watch, they're definitely a bit more problem here for Phenomenon. We got the Stug 3G around here for Phenomenon and the 5th Panzer DB Sean. There you go, T4 was about to go flank by the Stug here. If the Stug, of course, spots it. There we go. Good shot, right for the side armor. Phenomenon here going in aggressively, sensing it that Mira Selector made a mistake by extending here against Phenomenon. He could charge him on the Pumas and the Stug, but no. Perhaps plays a bit more carelessly, but this is probably where Person would have gone a bit more in aggressively. Probably shows what I know. Anyway, it's going to be flanking the field and crew about to wipe it out here. Two Pumas and a Stug. That is definitely not a usual Wehrmacht force composition. Hands of ever meanwhile. Will it ever kill anything at this point? I do have to wonder. Ooh, Stug that rushed in though. Rather incautiously by Fnivin, truth be told. Cross from the Stug, unsurprising, that was that was just a waste of Stug. Not in sure what happened there. Maybe it was a misclick, pathing error, I don't know, but that was definitely not good. Easy kill though for Middlesbrough, obviously. He did get the field gun, he's also got some pioneers out. That was a rather waste of Sturmgeschutz. Pulling back the rest of his armor though in the C70, he does need some repairs. He does, on the other end, like for now, have two engineer squads though. Worth noting, they're not fully reinforced yet. Boom, they're being fixed up. Counter-attack taxis again, allowing for now to quickly grab back some terrain. Thumbs up. Finally got the machine gun, as apparently Mirasol never bothered capturing it, which is honestly a bit of a surprise there. You would think he'd want it because, A, a six-man MD-42 team is really good, but also denying it to Fanon also has some benefits too. So that's a bit of a surprise there by uh, Mirasol. Maybe he just didn't see it, I don't know. Or perhaps he felt like he had bigger priorities. All the way that Puma being fixed up. Both Pumas there doing fairly well. Vecini 2. One kill though. Panzer for Still no kills. Can't imagine the crew's feeling great about this. How many rockets have you fired and how many have you killed? It's just right. We're going to be on the wrong end of the rockets, aren't we? Anyways. KV-8 flamethrower tank there for Mirasol is an interesting pick here. I mean, versus the Pumas, it can help up just negate a lot of the damage because they're going to struggle penetrating it. Like, plus, it can sort of burn through for Nyman stuff here. So, yeah, this is, uh... I mean, this match is certainly getting, uh... fairly out of bond bounds of the usual meta game, that's for sure. Second Puma setting out there for Deutschland. Got the T-34 and the heavy tank destroying Israel, well, heavy tank, medium tank destroyer. KB almost down there for middle assault. Also, fun fact about the Siskin in German service, but they actually like re-chamber them and re-ball them 
packed using German Pack 40 ammunition. Apparently they were quite good. They were known as the Pack 36R in that regard. We need to the comes in the center here. And there you go, KV-8 tank out here for Mirazol. That's a pretty rare sight too. And Fernand goes for another Stug. Thumbs up. Let's just hope it does a bit. It doesn't get thrown away immediately. That said, he has gone to wipe in Mirazol. That's a problem for Mirazol here. That is a big problem. As Fernand has four squads versus two. Uma Filg in the west here, we've got the T for getting the center gun of these here. Stug one third of the way down here for Fnaven. Uma shoots, misses. Does not miss the T70 though. In fact, it's now halfway towards the east level. Sturm geschützt, drei Aus für den almost done for Fnaven. And the fifth Panzer to be shown. There we go, Sturmgeschutz ready. KB burning through here, and there we go, Pool. Field gun shoots actually bounce off the KB's armor. Panzer Vascal on the T for the force from six. Boom, and they're halfway done. Panzer of ever being hauled up. Oh, it actually got something killed. It actually killed quite a few now. Eight kills. Hurrah! Field gun bounces again off the KB's armor. Stug does not. Puny as the country was there. So what will Mirosol do next if versus for Ivan? What will Fnaven do? It's definitely a bit of an interesting situation they are in here. Another Panzer of Barrage from Fnaven. T-70 had just taken a fair amount of damage from it and the field gun almost got wiped out too. Slowing out here. So it's going to make for head on assault here versus mid assault. Quite aggressive though, of course. What he could do is like race in the Pumas from an angle, then run him right in front of the stuff and deploy smoke. That way messing with mid assault. So now going to tank Overwatch here. Perhaps that's what Fnaven's home to bait out. Before charging in maybe or flanking from another angle. KB they almost knocked out. T for the from the line of fire. Puma they're taking head here from it. Puma number two and Stu ult being hammered there by the anti tank Overwatch. And he's almost wiped out here. And he's right in the center here, but the T-34 from 6. Boomer Stuk hold back here as Mirosana goes in the offensive versus Fnaven once more. Rushing straight after the Gunadiers here, mercilessly. Boomer need repairs. Panzer have hold the way back here. But I mean, there's no intention of losing that punch weapon. No, it's actually killed something. Boom being fixed up. We can still do with more pioneers. I mean, he does have like a fairly large armored fleet of vehicular fleet. So more pioneers, I think, really would be good investment for Fnaven at this point. A really good investment. After that, I still think it also be. Oh well. Boom, there's the advancing T-34 from six. He could go for the aim shot here. Go, he does do so. There you go, jamming the trade ring here of the T-54 from 6. Almost got it too. Other pool moving in here, close to the edge on that one. Far south, he's going to flanking up. They could pop counter-attack tactics again here versus Mirasol. Going to be a half back time for in the center. They're going to assault T, rush head on into the Maximus. Unsurprising the 40 of Mirasol. And there you go, the Panzer for Strax again. Will it actually kill something again? Yeah, it actually got a few more kills again. But there we go, Fnaven to the left flank here becomes fairly weak here, and Mirasol sends this, charges in there, but Ryan to Stuk, which gains right into one here, feeling about to get wiped out here under Mirasol's unwavering socialist assault here. He's finally brought more pioneers as well there, thumbs up to Fnaven, he's about to lose his other pioneer squad though. That is less great. If we were to lose that, we got 175-180. Yeah, this is a uh, not your average Velma vs. Soviet match. Issue 5 tank on the west side here. Kind of forgot Mirosol had that one because it hasn't really felt like he's been using it a lot. In fact, he's going for another Issue 5 tank destroyer on R vs. Fnaven. And he probably really also needs some infantry. 
I still think he'd benefit a lot from a Commonsite command squad. And there you go. Counter tactics in from Van Ivan. Thumbs up. Really applying that pressure to Metasol. He's finally going for some more infantry and more conscripts. Pumas there being fixed up. Stuttgart, of course, could also repair. So he could also consider adding the pin mount machine gun. I know not everyone is a fan of that, but personally, I do find it is quite handy dandy. It cancels the issued founder for Katusha rocket launch. I mean, it does make sense. In fact, it probably makes more sense going for second issued fire here. If he's really that concerned about the Pumas and such, I'd actually recommend going for issued 6Ms as they're a bit cheaper there. Get more of them that way, just deploy the rapid rate of fire against the Pumas to knock them out. Plus, it would provide them with additional artillery as well. So, we got Fanami beating up Mirasol here. Pumas good to go, Stug being repaired here. Adding in the penalty machine and Gewehr. Thumbs up. He's with the constant engineers there. East side here, we got a large push from Mirasol against the Eastern Fuel Point, looking to reclaim it here for Fanivan. And he's about to get wiped out by the KB, unleashing its powerful flamethrower. They almost got the Gunnadius here. There you go, Kachusha Rock launch out there for Mirasol and the Red Army. Fun fact about the T-70 and Kachusha, they actually have a version of the T-70 where they removed the gun and just mounted a bunch of rockets on the top. Not a lot of rockets like, you know, the, the Kachusha rocket tropes, they're like enough to like do some damage. Here's the Conscus. And there you go, Panzer Bash off against Mirasol. Good gravy, that was a hell of a rocket strike there. That took out one squad and left another squad practically non existent as well. Wow. That leaves Mirasol in a really bad place again. Could for now exploit this with a rapid assault here, in which case he could possibly just destroy Mirasol on the spot and win the game. Of course, such an assault could also be a great risk for Fnaven, could cost him his attack and then turn the game around against him. So, I understand why I wouldn't do it, but I'd certainly say there might be a consideration for it now. This is a off here for Mirasol against Fnaven. Stug Puma here with the T-34 some 6. Stug slowly approaching the T-2 there, but it's getting hammered here. Got the T-34 some 6, Puma diving in here, aiming shot here at the... T7, there we go, Puma with your feet diving in there, we go, got the T7 here, KV8 they're in trouble, Puma swinging up behind, he should five, they're moving in, Stug gaining, Vetsy two shirts and added, wunderbar, Puma flying at the H5 tank to store here, keep flying around the KV8 here, could try and send one Puma around to help deal with the H5 there maybe, there we go, he could also load up the heat shell and go hunting for the H5, or well, suppose he could just use this Puma to deal with the H5 too, I mean, the issue 5 that can't shoot the Puma because it's outflanked is pretty much dead in the water anyways, and that's exactly what happens here. Teeth and Fuskets from the Mirasol, but I think, yeah, this. Oh, and there you go, Puma Stoop moving in, issue 5 down, and now Mirasol's Kachusa is about to go up in flames as well, but no, right before the shot connects, the match ends. So there you go, GG game over. A, a rather fierce win here for Fnaven. Some great back and forth action, some great maneuvering, some great displays of tactics. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment. Consider telling your friends, your family. Share it with everyone. And of course, thank me for doing this, I guess. No, don't, don't really. Just, you know, if you can support me, though, of course, donations or pledges on Patreon are most appreciated. This is Imperial 18. Cheers, and see you all tomorrow for another episode. Bye.